Thanks for joining me as I talk about the sulfonylureas. Glimepiride and glycoside are sulfonylureas. Sulfonylureas are oral anti-diabetic agents or oral hypoglycemic agents that are used in the treatment of type 2 diabetes. They're not useful in type 1 diabetes. And the reason is because of the fact that the primary action of the sulfonylureas is to increase the endogenous production of insulin. But the type 1 diabetic patients don't have any endogenous production of insulin at all. So it will not be useful in type 1 diabetics. Because of the fact that the sulfonylureas can actually increase the production of insulin from the pancreas, they can cause hypoglycemia. Now this is different from most of the other oral hypoglycemic agents. Most of them are not able to cause profound hypoglycemia, but the sulfonylureas have that ability. So it's important that the person on the sulfonylureas gets quite a bit of education with respect to hypoglycemia, the way to avoid the hypoglycemia, and what to do as they feel that uh, hypoglycemia may be setting in. As I said before, the sulfonylureas primarily act at the level of the pancreas, increasing the production of insulin from the pancreas. But glimepiride and glycoside also work to increase the insulin levels by decreasing the hepatic breakdown of insulin. So by two different mechanisms, the person taking sulfonylureas will have increased levels of insulin. While that sounds pretty good, it's important to realize that a lot of diabetics already have what we call hyperinsulinemia, or high levels of insulin. Their problem is oftentimes the fact that they have an insulin resistance. Their cells are not really responding to the insulin in the right way. And just think back on some of the responsibilities of insulin one of those responsibilities is to increase the amount of fat that is stored in adipose tissues or fat cells. So the sulfonylureas will result in weight gain. Also, if the person is a, a young female between the age of about 20 to 30, there's oftentimes an increased risk of developing polycystic ovarian syndrome. Because of these adverse effects, sulfonylureas are not the primary therapy for type 2 diabetes. But they can be fairly beneficial for those diabetics who are starting to decrease in their own production of insulin. So after a long time, oftentimes a type 2 diabetic has a decrease in their production of insulin that might be a good time for a person to go on the sulfonylureas and also a person who has very high levels of glucose in their system would oftentimes benefit from a combination therapy including sulfonylureas. Sulfonylureas uh, tend to interact with a wide variety of different medications one of the things that you have to remember is that any of the medications that actually increase the uh, levels of glucose in the system are going to uh, require a greater dose of sulfonylureas. So and things like corticosteroids and sympathomimetics will actually increase levels of glucose. Sulfonylureas also have 
a number of other adverse effects with a number of different drugs, but you'll have to actually check with the individual sulfonylureas because they vary greatly between one drug and another. Sulfonylureas are not effective for all diabetics. And then in the diabetics that they are effective in, their effectiveness may actually wane over time. And now you know. Thanks for joining me.